I'm Adrian Williams. I'm the executive director of the Village Project. And we want, thank you. We want to welcome you to today's celebration. It's the first of 16 celebrations throughout the city over a seven day period. We're here to celebrate the Nguza Saba, the seven principles of Kwanzaa. So each day, we will collect, uh, collectively come together as a community and we will celebrate one of those principles. Today, we're here to celebrate the first principle of the Kanara, Umoja. And Umoja means unity. And the principle is to strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. How apropos is that principle given everything that is happening in this city and in this country? I want, to, I want you to think about Umoja and that principle throughout the program. Because if we live by the seven principles, the Nguza Saba, throughout the year, we would be united we would love one another and we would take care of one another. So that is what has made us so diligent about having Kwanzaa, the Kwanzaa celebration each year. So we invite you to sit back and enjoy the first day of Kwanzaa Umoja. So now uh, we are going to, I don't see the mayor, um, the mayor is coming, so we will proceed. And when Mayor London Breed comes in, we'll introduce her. But a lot has happened to us over the course of the last few weeks. One, we lost our mayor, Ed Lee. So at this time, I was hoping that everyone will bow their heads in a silent prayer for Mayor Lee's family, friends, and this city. Amen. We would also like to extend our prayers and our support for our current mayor, London Breed. Uh, she will be with us shortly. So now, as I mentioned, this Kwanzaa celebration over the next seven days is a collaborative effort. There are many community partners. And uh, uh, while we're waiting for the mayor, I'd just like to mention some of them. On your seats and on the back of the program is the schedule for all of the Kwanzaa presentations um, this, this week. So take a look at your programs. There's uh, Supervisor Malia Cohen. Thank you. Hey, Supervisor. So let's proceed. Uh, right now we will bring up Brother Clint and Brother Malik to pour libations uh, and honor our ancestors. Abardi Ghani. So when I say Abardi Ghani, we're going to fill this room up with unity, the word Umoja. Abardi Ghani. We awake today, Hambardi Ghani. Hambardi Ghani. The state that our city is in, we definitely need unity. We need some black unity. And uh, we've had a lot of things happening that has been testing our city for its integrity. And we, the people, on this day of unity, we're going to pour libations in right of all of those that have lost their lives. Uh, this one. I like to uh, give out to a close person by the name of Iki Nori, who was shot mercilessly in the streets of San Francisco by the SFPD. But on the other note, I also would like to do this in the name of uh, Mayor Ed Lee and, and also a nod to our new mayor, our acting mayor, 
London Breed. I'd like to say good morning to my good brother, Clint. And we're gonna get started now. And now we pour libations. Libations is the pouring out of liquid in honor of those people who have passed away. With one person pouring liquid into a vessel, you say, ah, she. Say, ah, she. I say the name of an ancestor. And when I'm pouring this water, my voice vibrates through the water and it becomes something special. It becomes an offering of our love. I pour out a little love for all those people whose shoulders we stand on and are obligated. Ashe. I pour out a little love, a little love for all those millions of Africans marched across the interior of Africa to the West Coast, put on slave ships and brought to America. Each ripple in the ocean is a grave for an African who refused to be a slave. Say Ashe. I pour out a little love for the Maroons down in Florida. Ashe. I pour out a little love for Harriet Tubman. Ashe. I pour out a little love for Denmark Vesey. Ashe. People who came to this country fighting from the moment their feet hit the ground. I pour out a little love, a little love for Frederick Douglass. I pour out a little love, a little love for all those freedom fighters whose names we don't know. I'd like for you to remember the names of your family because in a moment I'm going to ask everyone at the same time to fill up this rotunda with the names of the names of those people, our ancestors, who we don't want time to forget. It's been said that when people stop saying your name, you are truly dead. We don't want to forget our loved ones, those people who came before us. I pour out a little love for Madam C.J. Walker, Ashe. I pour out a little love, a little love for Billie Holiday. I pour out a little love for a magnificent love, Ruby D. and Ozzy Davis, Ashe. I pour out a little love, a little love for all those great innovators, inventors of wonderful things. Elijah McCoy, Ashe. Dr. Charles R. Drew, Ashe. I pour out a little love for Dr. George Washington Carver, Ashe. Let us not forget he who just recently passed away and not with us today. Can I get a big Ashe for our beloved Ed Lee, our mayor that couldn't be with us, this Kwanzaa, he did great things. Look it up if you don't believe me. He did what he could while he could, and that's what we must do. Right now, say the names of your ancestors, the names of those people in your family whose names I do not know. Fill up this room with the names of your ancestors. Black, white, Latino, male, female, say their names. Libations is not a black thing, it's a thing that we do to remember those people. Make them come alive inside of you. Say their name. Linda Diane Tucker, Adele Hardy, Wiley Hardy. Say their names, say their names, honor them. Don't let them die. They may not be here with us, but say their names always. When you have a little water or some milk, pour out there a little liquid and say their names. Ashe! 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 I'll make sure that this water finds itself to a plant so it can breathe again, rise up into the sky, and maybe come back down on our faces as rain. Say Ashe! Give it up for the Village Project and the City of San Francisco. Thank you. Thank you. And now I see that we are honored with our mayor, London Breed, 
and I am pleased as pie to have her here today. Give a hand for our Mayor London Breed. And can the rest of you all come in and have a seat? We have enough room. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Happy Kwanzaa. Yeah. Umoja. Yeah. Today, we celebrate the first day of Kwanzaa, which means unity. Hey, Supervisor Cohen. Come on up here with me. Come on up. She's trying to hide. Today, we celebrate the first day of Kwanzaa, unity. Unity in our homes, unity in our communities, unity in our great city. It's so wonderful to see all the people here today at City Hall celebrating Kwanzaa. And I just want to say something about this celebration. Every single year for the past 12 years, the Village Project under the leadership of Adrian Williams has consistently went out of their way to raise money, to bring people together, to make sure that we celebrate our cultural heritage and our significance in our community. And I want to thank Adrienne for her consistency. And I want to thank Brother Clint and Malik for always being the amazing leaders in our community and continuing to teach the next generation about the principles of Kwanzaa and about why it's so important that we come together as a community, unity. Today, we talk about the people, sadly, that we lost in our communities, some because of violence, sadly, some because of natural causes. Some of you know we have lost our mayor, and we today honor them by remembering all the incredible work they've done for our communities. But more importantly, we honor them by continuing to come together and work together in their spirit, in their memory, to do everything we can as a collective to love one another, to support one another, to encourage one another, and to make sure that the next generation, the next generation understands these principles to carry those on for future generations. We have a lot of work to do, but today we celebrate. We celebrate love, we celebrate community, we celebrate these amazing principles. And, and let me just say this, yesterday was Christmas and I watched and was happy as my nephew and my niece and they opened their presents and they were all so excited about celebrating Christmas and, and, and getting presents. But those toys, those toys go away. After they play with them and they're tired of them, those toys go in a bin, they may not ever play with them again. The principles that we teach of Kwanzaa, unity, purpose, all the different things that we talk about here today, we can make sure that those principles never go away that we instill those kinds of values in our children so that they have something that they can carry on. It is important, more important than presents and gifts during Christmas. Our community together, strong, is what matters the most. And so thank you for coming to City Hall to celebrate. There is a long list of programs all over the city. And I know because of champions like Adrian Williams, Brother Clint, and Malik, we know that they're going to be at every single location celebrating, honoring, uplifting the community, and we invite you to join us wherever we are. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful Kwanzaa. No, 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 no. Supervisor Cohen, she just came to enjoy, but just say a few quick words, Supervisor. Thank you, Habari Ghani, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. You know what I think about when I think about the principles of Kwanzaa? I think about one word, and that's leadership. These five principles all stem back to leadership, self-determination, prince, purpose, unity, 
Those are just a few, but they all have something uniquely in common and they all manifest in different ways in today's world. And they all come from one spirit and that is the spirit of leadership. So when you see someone needing help, stop and help them. When you see someone asking a question, answer that question. Be patient, be kind, and be loving. Those are the principles that we must remember and that we must continue to move forward. Self-determination in particular. It's a few days away, but I want you to reflect on each and every da daily principle and think about how it manifests in your life. How does it show up in your family? That is what this collective unity, these celebration days are all about. Thank you. Habardi Ghani, let's try it out. Habardi Ghani. So we're gonna say, we're gonna put our fist up and say Umoja. Habardi Ghani. Habardi Ghani. Habardi Ghani. All right, Umoja it is. And now on your seat, you'll find a slip of paper. We're going to do the first verse of the National Black Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. All righty. Can we all stand, please? Here we go. Lift every voice and sing. Lift every voice and sing. Till earth and heaven rings, ring with the humble need of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Come on now. You don't have to because we're behind. They put us out of here at oh, 1 o'clock. Okay. Now we have to move right along so that we can get out on a timely manner. So right now, as I mentioned, we have tons of partners to help bring these events to fruition. But our longest standing partner and supporter is the Bayview Hunters Point YMCA. And I'm honored to have my sorority sister and the senior executive director of the Bayview Y uh, here to greet you guys. Please, let's give a hand to, uh oh, <laughs> Takesia Gardner. I'm having a senior moment. Takesia Gardner. Umoja, as we speak on unity, this year, 2017, has been one where our people has really emerged to show our true unity, to support our community through adversity. And the message I want to send today is, on behalf of the YMCA, that's an inclusive organization, but me as a black woman who is standing proud in front of you today, let's continue to uplift and empower our community so that we can continue to strive through all adversity that we're faced with. We have an acting mayor, the first black acting mayor of San Francisco. And so let's throw our support behind her, Ms. London Breathe because we are the ones that are changing the face of San Francisco. We are the ones that are supporting our community. I see my supervisor here, 
Ms. Cohen with us today. Let's continue to throw our support behind her because they are our leaders that are really pushing for change and ensuring that we have to be a thriving community. So once again, on behalf of the YMCA, thank you and welcome to Kwanzaa City Hall where Ms. Adrian has for many years kicked us off with this great celebration for our people. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to briefly uh, invite up one of my favorite people, the Reverend Eric Matoye. He's a canon to the ordinary pro temporary of the Diocese of California. So Father Eric, thank you for coming out again and joining us for Kwanzaa. And our family will always share a little sugar with one another. Habarigari. Umoja. Habarigari. Umoja. Habarigari. Umoja. Back in 1965, Dr. Molana Karenga of Cal State University in Long Beach created Kwanzaa as a, specifically as an African American holiday. He used the principles from the Swahili phrase, but Matunda. Ya Kwanzaa, the first fruits of the harvest. He chose Swahili, which is a pan-African language in East Africa, spoken by the peoples of Tanzania, of Uganda, of Kenya. There's no particular nation or tribe associated with it. It is across those nations in East Africa. Dr. Karenga wanted to celebrate seven principles, Nguza Saba, that is a communitarian African philosophy, which is instead of we tear each other apart, we try to bring each other together. Those, those principles are umoja, unity, kujijakulia, self-determination, ujima, collective work and responsibility, ujama, cooperative economics, nia, purpose, kaumba, creativity, and Imani, our faith. We have our symbols here, but most of all, what we want to remember is that in Kwanzaa, which is a holiday celebrated in countries around the world by some 30 million people, that this is a holiday for all people, for all people who share these cooperative principles, that together we are stronger than we are when we are apart. In his 2017 Kwanzaa message, Dr. Karenga challenged us to, and I quote, to repair, renew, and remake our world by practicing the seven principles of Kwanzaa, that our job is to make it more beautiful and beneficial than the world we have inherited, that we make a world that is more beautiful and beneficial than that which we inherited. What's the word, Abadigani? Abadigari. Umoja. Abadigari. Umoja. Thank you. Thank you, Father Eric. Thank you. And now we're going to have a nice treat. Where is Brother Clint? Brother Clint is going to sing the seven principles. This is uh, one of my favorite songs. Come up, babies. The baby's here. Come help Brother Clint sing the seven principles. These are the village kids, and they'll be entertaining you in a few minutes. Come up and help Brother Clint sing the seven principles. Habari Ghani means what's going on, and today it's about unity. Look at the unity we have here right now. Say Umoja. Umoja. Say Umoja. Umoja. Okay. Give me another start on that, man. Start me over on that. Turn it up just a little. 
These are the seven principles. You got me? Hold on, I'm gonna let you sing on this one. This is the one we're gonna sing on right here. Say happy Kwanzaa. She said, I just look cute. What you think, man? Yeah, just to start from the beginning, you got to open it back up, did turn it up a little. Smile the bone with another opportunity to better ourselves, to strengthen our families and support our community. Recite, if you will, in Guzu Saba, the seven principles. Umoja is unity, and that's the way it should always be, to build and maintain unity in the family, nation, and community. As a people, we need to get together and share our blessings. That's the way it should always be. Umoja is unity. Kujichagulia is self-determination, you see? To define ourselves, name ourselves, create for ourselves, and speak for ourselves. Kujichagulia is self-determination, you see? I need freedom to define my own goals so no one has to speak for me. Ujima, collective work and responsibility to build and maintain our community together. Your worries, mine, my worries, yours, whatever. Let's take responsibility for our past and what our future's gonna be. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Ujima, cooperative economics. Uh, that money, man. To build and maintain our own stores, our own shops, our own businesses, getting crops, sharing profits, feeling fine. I buy your goods, you buy mine. Believing people come before profits do. Power to the people, to the me, to the you. Ujamaa, we must understand that money, man. Nia is purpose, like a little girl's name, to make our collective hurt the lifting and building of our community so our people can rise to our traditional greatness. We are social beings and we must work together, our hood. But Nia's purpose, so it's all good. Kuumba is creativity, to do always as much as you can in the way that you can. So the community we inherit is more lovely than it began. Uh, enhance the world, a flavor from you, a taste from me. Kuumba is creativity. Imani is faith. Uh, come on. To believe in our hearts and our people, in our parents and our teachers too, and the righteousness of our struggle. Believe in the power of you. Selectively honor our leaders. Forever encourage the young with Imani, with faith. You guys repeat after me. Umoja. There you go, that means unity. Kujichagalia, self-determination. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Ujima'a, cooperative economics. Nia, that's purpose, that's why we get up in the morning. Kuumba, creativity. Imani, faith, come on, Umoja. Kujichagalia, Ujima. Ujima'a, Nia, Kuumba, Imani, Ashe. Who's going to have a positive day, Ashe, Ashe? Who's going to have a positive learning day, Ashe, Ashe? Who will respect themselves today, Ashe, Ashe? Who will respect the teacher today, Ashe, Ashe? Who will smile today? Say, still. Who will laugh today? Say, I. Who will love today? Say, rise. Who gonna get their quasi on today? Say, I shake. Okay, everybody, get your rock on like this. That's it. That's it. Get your rock on. Uh. Uh.
a seven-day celebration to kick off a year-long practice of the Nguzu Saba. The Nguzu Saba is the answer to all our ills. Everything that's going on with us can be solved if we practice the Nguzu Saba. Seven days, seven principles, seven candles, seven symbols. We're gonna practice Kwanzaa until we get it right. Kwanzaa is only 51 years old. Everyone says, oh, that's a new, that's a baby celebration. Well, weren't they all at one point? We have to celebrate Kwanzaa because it's an opportunity for us to share black people, to share the black community, to share our culture with the world. That's right. If you celebrate Kwanzaa, and it's not a black thing, it's an inclusive holiday. It's an American holiday. Yeah! Say, I'm gonna get my Kwanzaa on! Say, I'm gonna get my Kwanzaa on! Say, I'm gonna get me some Kwanzaa! Say, I'm gonna get my Kwanzaa on! How about a hand for the children? How about a hand for the children? They need our encouragement. How about a hand for my sidekick right here, too? What a good baby. She gonna save the world someday. My name is Brother Clint. You honor me. Everybody say, I'm gonna get my Kwanzaa on. I'm gonna get my Kwanzaa on. Thank you, Brother Clint. Uh-oh. And now, a little wisdom, our keynote speaker today, uh-oh, just a moment. Our keynote speaker today is John Templeton. And John is an author, a historian, and on February the 14th, he will be at the Frederick Douglass birthday party to, as a speaker uh, on African-American Civil War um, African Americans in time of war. He will be at the African American Civil War Museum in Washington, D.C. And as the theme for Black History Month this year, uh, the focus is on African Americans in time of war. And John is leading the efforts to have students here in San Francisco and this country to connect with over 209,000 colored troops who won freedom for all African Americans. Locally, John's focus is on the African American Freedom Trail. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to John Templeton, author of Our Roots Run Deep, The Black Experience in California, Volumes 1 through 4. Mr. John Templeton. First, giving honor to God, and uh, since she mentioned, uh, I am a fourth generation Presbyterian ruling elder, and uh, uh, all things are, uh, are due to our faith in uh, the Creator. Back in uh, June, I spoke to 10,000 pastors at the Hampton Ministers Conference, and I was representing Black Wealth 2020, which is a national coalition to grow our share of the economy to 10% of gross domestic product from 6% as it is right now. We started out as three-fifths of a person, but now we're 13% of the population with 6% of national income. So now we're 43% of a person. So the organizing that we're doing on a national level about economics, uh, which we'll be talking about later in the week, is actually following up 
on the, the lessons that come from San Francisco. Back in 1854, the color convention of California gathered. And they talked about the fact that African Americans in San Francisco had accumulated more than $750,000 in property and wealth. That the first black bank in the country was founded here in San Francisco. And that we have five institutions that were founded in 1852 that are still active today. And so it's our institutions that are the, the foundation behind our freedom struggle. So we can never forget about our culture and our institutions as we individually move up because it is those institutions. Uh, we just had uh, our new mayor here who was a member of Third Baptist Church and participated in the NAACP, which was started in 1915 in San Francisco. So those who started those institutions long ago were paving the way for the success that we have today. I want to mention something from uh, our book, uh, Road to Ratification, which talks about the 13th Amendment, which is the most important event in African American history. How many of you young people know about the 13th Amendment? Young people. <laughs> so what we did was um, we found the ratification document for all 33 states that approved the 13th Amendment between February 1st, 1865 and February of 1866. And I want to mention one of the things that we observed, because for each of those states, we asked five questions. We said, well, when was the first black person in that state? When was the first black school? It was the first black church. How many African Americans served in the American Revolution and the Civil War? And when was slavery ended in that state? So we found out that there was a direct correlation between the first black institutions and the end of slavery in each of those states. So the people who graduated from the first black school in that state became the leaders of the abolition movement in that state. And so part of the lesson that we want students to draw from doing the family history of the 209,145 blacks who came together in unity from 1863 to 1865, just over 18 months, they came together and they won their freedom. So we believe that half of today's African Americans have an ancestor who is on the African American Civil War uh, monument in Washington, DC. And we want young people to find out who those ancestors were. We want them to look at the records in the uh, Freedmen's Bureau. We want them to look at the pension records. We want them to look at the land that they purchased after the war. We want them to explore the nine generations that most African-American kids represent in this country so that they never have to worry about whether they belong or not. And it's so important that we establish our presence at the beginning of this country. On March 5th, it's a state law in California that we're supposed to observe Black American Day. 
And that was because of the Christmas Addicts Clubs over in uh, Bayview Hunters Point. And they were so well organized that the Ford Foundation in 1966 said they were the model for effective community organization. And they went to the first African-American cabinet member and sat in at his office for a week until they came away with $50 million to create the first model cities program in the country. And some of the programs like Bayview Y are still the legacy of the organization that they did. So a couple weeks ago, somebody asked me to find a picture of Geraldine Johnson. And how many of you know who Geraldine Johnson was? Okay, so Geraldine Johnson was responsible for creating the African-American art and culture complex. So this is another institution that helped lead to us having an acting mayor today. Okay, she was responsible for the Martin Luther King Memorial Waterfall in Yerba Buena. And she created San Francisco Housing Development Corporation. So there are affordable housing units all across the city as a result of her work. But nobody had a picture of her. And so that's the kind of history that our young people need to know about. Uh, there weren't enough hands that came up uh, as we talked about her. And so I hope you come out on uh, January 17th for the curriculum committee of the school board because we'll be talking about an infusion ordinance to make sure that all of our students are completely grounded in the history of African Americans in San Francisco and in California and the nation. Uh, you know, we've created the African American Freedom Trail throughout California with 6,000 sites. One of those sites is the site where Clint uh, brought uh, his bikers, uh, the African American millionaire who funded the Mexican War, and created California's first public school. So right now we have a problem of almost 50% of African American students statewide and here in the city are chronically absent. And many of them feel that they don't belong in school. And these are the young people that we need to say, look, this is a young man who left home from a single parent family in, at age 18, and he was ten, in 10 years, he was the richest man in San Francisco. And he started public education in this whole state. So his name was William Alexander Leidersdorf. So that's the kind of information that our young people need to know. They need to know about the black warrior queen who gave California's name, whose pictures are up on Knob Hill in the uh, Mark Hopkins Hotel. But it's only gonna happen Queen California. It's only gonna happen if we exhibit the same unity that Mary Ellen Pleasant and George Washington Dennis exhibited in the 1850s when they said, Archie Lee is not going back to Mississippi. They went to court four times. And eventually, they just went out and, and chartered a ship and took him and hit him. So we want you to make sure that as we talk about 
the seven principles that we understand that the biggest principle is that we have to make sure that our young people understand that the purpose of education is to take their place in the black freedom struggle. Habari Ghani. Oh, uh, also um, on um, January 6th, we are doing uh, the first um, Hannibal Williams, uh, Mary Helen Rogers, Geraldine Johnson, Artif Nichols Symposium at New Liberation Presbyterian Church, thanks for reminding me, uh, from 10 to 3 on African Americans in city policy. And one of the things we want to do is just make a note of what the victories we've already won and the promises that have been made so that we can make sure that we keep those legacies alive. And on um, uh, February 14th, I'm the, uh, the speaker on Frederick Douglass's birthday uh, at the African American Civil War uh, Memorial. And also on the 12th, I'll be doing a uh, reenactment of uh, Reverend Henry Highland Garnett, who was the first African American to speak in the U.S. Capitol, and I'll be doing that in the uh, U.S. Capitol. So, um, look forward to speaking with you and sharing Kwanzaa without you, with you throughout the week. Thank you. Brother John Templeton. And now we're going to have a wonderful performance by Sister Amina. Uh, Sister Amina is a songwriter a singer, an author, and she's here today to do a piece for us. So would you put your hands together for Sister Imina.
celebrate Kwanzaa today. Let me hear you say, Ashe. Mama Africa, how are you doing, Mama? Mama Africa, how long time me no see you, Mama? They took me away from you, Mama. Oh, yeah. Long before I came on. Come on. And I say, Mama Africa, how are you doing, Mama? Mama Africa, long time me no see you, Mama. Africa, our motherland, come on, our fatherland, on which our ancestors stand. Africa, the mother of civilization, the father of culture, of good vibrations. We give thanks to our great African ancestors all throughout the land. Ashe, come on. To our great ancestors, we give thanks. We give praise, Ashe. To our great ancestors of Kush, now Ethiopia. Our great ancestors of Kemet, now Egypt, Ashe. Our great ancestors of Kush, of Punt, now Somalia. Of Azania, now South Africa of Great Zimbabwe, of Bakongo, of Yoruba land, of Fulani land, of Igbo land, all our ancestors throughout the land. Ashe, come on, come on, come on. Mama Africa, let me hear you. Come on, San Francisco. Mama Africa. One more time, come on. Mama Africa. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. If you're feeling good, let me hear you say Ashe. If you're giving thanks for life, let me hear you say Ashe. And if you're ready to roll with us from Ghetto to Goddess, let me hear you say Ashe. All right, we're going to go to From Ghetto to Goddess. Ghetto to Goddess. Ghetto to Goddess. And this is coming from Oakland to San Francisco to, to the world. How are we living life? Are we free from pain? Free from strife? If we're not, I'm telling why. We must believe we can fly, fly above all the pain, journey to a higher plane, strategize when the game, flow with these, make a change. Come on. From ghetto to goddess, from ghetto to goddess, come on. From ghetto to goddess, come on. From ghetto to goddess, goddess. From ghetto to goddess, come on. From ghetto to goddess, come on. From ghetto to goddess, from ghetto to goddess. Being in the ghetto is a state of mind that we've been forced into in a place and time. Some of my people just might say living in the ghetto is our only way but we can make it right when we try i'm telling you don't live a lie know your history get the keys free yourself from mental slavery 
from ghetto to goddess. Come on, from ghetto to goddess. Come on, from ghetto to goddess. Hey, from ghetto to goddess, goddess. From ghetto to goddess. Come on, from ghetto to goddess. Hey, from ghetto to goddess. From ghetto to goddess. It's time that we rock it. I'm calling you my art. Oh, set, nip, hit, set, commit. Goddess is a set. My mind be on. And if you're thinking it's best for me, sorry you're wrong. I'm seeing God through my own race. I'm in a divine place. God through my own race. I'm in a divine place. I ain't believing no high in the sky. I'ma wake up and live. I know the most high. Let's go to another level. Give more ancestral give thanks for how we living. And be forgiven for the things we didn't know or didn't show. Give thanks for progress. Miracles get more intuitive. Spiritual, make our prayers every day. Melinda Rowe. So rock with me, rock with me, rock with me like, uh, 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 uh. Restore your love, restore your life. Restore your love from pain and strife. Restore your love, restore your life. Restore your love. Live the goddess love. From From Ghetto to Goddess, Ashe. We good? One more? Thank you. Sister Imina, thank you. Okay, we are slightly behind schedule. Can the village kids come up and project level, you're next. And here, if some of you don't know me, I run an after school program. You down there. And one of the things is you have to pitch in. We needed six people. We got five. So now Granny is going to help the babies dance. Ugh. Okay, we have to take up the slack. Here we go. All right.
The show must go on. All right, so our final performance is Project Level. Come in, kids. They're going to entertain you with dance. and every one of you for coming out. Want to remind you, at 2 p.m. today, we'll be at the Museum of the African Diaspora. And then tonight at 7 p.m., we'll be at the African American Arts and Cultural Complex, where we'll have uh, Bernard Anderson playing some blues, so join us. And thank you very much to all of our partners and our sponsors. I see the Boys and Girls Club here, the Bayview Y, uh, the African American Arts and Cultural Complex. We also have the Western Edition Family Resource Center, the Western Edition Senior Center. We have OMI Resource Center, Potrero Hill Resource Center, RSSE. Come out, pick up a schedule. We have 15 more events to go. Come out and support us. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Yo, all righty. Please stand. We're going to uh, make a circle, and we're going to do Harambe. We're going to reach up, and we're going to yell out Harambe seven times. This is how it works, OK? So what you're going to do is you're going to reach up in the air, and you're going to pull down Harambe. We all say it together. It's all, let's all pull together. We'll do it seven times. All right? We ready? All right. Harambe. Harambe. Haram Bay, Haram Bay, Haram Bay, Haram Bay, Haram Bay, Habari Ghani. Let's all pull together, let's all pull together, let's all pull together, let's all pull together. Mr. Derek Brown, thank you, Derek, once again for hosting Kwanzaa here at City Hall. Love you, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> 